the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. Practical Psychology for Today. Featuring the works of Idris Shah, voiced by David Alt. Welcome to the Idris Shah Foundation podcast. In this edition of the podcast, we present excerpts from Thinkers of the East by Idris Shah. This audio has been made available by the Idris Shah Foundation. The Design A Sufi of the Order of the Naqshbandis was asked, Your order's name means, literally, the designers. What do you design, and what use is it? He said, We do a great deal of designing, and it is most useful. Here is a parable of one such form. Unjustly imprisoned, a tinsmith was allowed to receive a rug woven by his wife. He prostrated himself upon the rug day after day to say his prayers, and after some time he said to his jailers, I am poor and without hope, and you are wretchedly paid. But I am a tinsmith. Bring me tin and tools, and I shall make small artefacts which you can sell in the market, and we will both benefit. The guards agreed to this, and presently the tinsmith and they were both making a profit, from which they bought food and comforts for themselves. Then one day, when the guards went to the cell, the door was open and he was gone. Many years later, when this man's innocence had been established, the man who had imprisoned him asked him how he had escaped, what magic he had used. He said, It is a matter of design, and design within design. My wife is a weaver. She found the man who had made the locks of the cell door, and got the design from him. This she wove into the carpet, at the spot where my head touched in prayer five times a day. I am a metal worker, and this design looked to me like the inside of a lock. I designed the plan of the artefacts to obtain the materials to make the key, and I escaped. That, said the Naqshbandi Sufi, is one of the ways in which man may make his escape from the tyranny of his captivity. Ghazali Practical Processes in Sufism Almost a thousand years have passed since Ghazali wrote his monumental work Restoration of Religious Sciences, Much of it is applicable only to people and problems of the Middle Ages, but certain portions, summarised here, give vital basic information about the theory, structure, technical terms and means of proceeding in Sufism. Ghazali shows that the element which the Sufis call knowledge is employed as a technical term and that its functions for the human being go far beyond what one would ordinarily regard as knowledge. More contemporary thinkers, and those writing with less danger of totalitarian counterattack, would call this form of knowledge the very force which maintains humanity. Knowledge, he says, the goal of the Sufi, is that which supports life to such an extent that if its transmission were to be interrupted for three days, the kernel of the individual dies, just as someone would die if he were deprived of food, or a patient dies when deprived of certain medicines. Sufi knowledge, therefore, is something which continually pours into man. It is the perception and employment of this knowledge which is the aim of mystics. Quoting Fatah al Masuli. Wisdom is sometimes used as understanding the special knowledge. Sometimes this causes people to depart from ordinary habits. Naturally, such conduct is opposed by the ordinary. Ordinary people are those who are blind to the urgent need for knowledge. This blindness Ghazali likens to a disease. It causes arrogance. When there is arrogance, knowledge cannot operate. The problem of men in seeking true knowledge is great because they do not know where to look for it or how to do so. 
This is because they have been deceived into mistaking rules and discipline, or scholasticism or argument, for instance, as the search for knowledge. What is this special knowledge which maintains man? It is so much more advanced a thing than, say, belief, what people call faith, that those who really know are 700 degrees in rank above those who only believe. Three traditional remarks about knowledge serve Ghazali as illustrations. Wisdom is so important that it might be said that mankind is composed solely of the wise, Ibn al-Mubarak. Whoever has knowledge and who works and teaches, he shall be mighty in the kingdom of heaven, attributed to Jesus. Solomon was offered wisdom, riches or power. He chose wisdom and gained riches and power in addition, Ibn Abbas. Purpose of Following the Science of Knowledge The purpose of the exercise of the science of knowledge, or Sufism as it is known, is to gain an eternally durable existence, Ghazali. Man may die, but wisdom is immortal, Ali, son of Abu Talib. All capacity not rooted in knowledge dies, Sakha el arnaf Those who possess the wisdom. There are always wise people on earth. The wise of the age are the luminaries of the era. From the illuminate of the age, the others receive their light. Al Hassan. The means. Celestial knowledge only comes about through human effort. How the science is pursued. One is prayer, but the inner function of prayer must be understood. In prayer there is a secret significance. The exercises of prayer mark hidden elements. Ghazali One piece of knowledge learnt in the early hours is better than prostrating oneself in prayer a hundred times. The Prophet The Stages of the Study Ghazali arranged these stages, which have their counterparts in thought, action and inner exercises. 1. Silence 2. Audition 3. Remembering 4. Action 5. Transmission It is the teacher who can guide his student as to the methods of following this curriculum. From one who learns. The seeker can learn only from the wise. They and their students are partners in goodness. Compared to them, the balance of mankind are savages devoid of virtue, because they are heedless of the most significant thing about their possibilities. Abu al Dada. The qualifications of the seeker. The requirement fixed for this knowledge is that the recipient can guard it without loss, Ikrima. The urgency. Search for knowledge while it is to be found. When those who have it die, it becomes concealed, Ibn Masud. On traditional obligations. Gaining knowledge is equivalent to what is called fear of God in conventionalized religion. Seeking it is the same as what ordinary people call worship. Studying it is the same as praise. Striving for it is equal to holy warfare, effort. Teaching it is the equivalent of giving charity. Handing it over is rewarded. Ghazali The Rules of the Schools A Lecture by Zulfikar The whole future of the well-being of the community of truth depends upon the right thought and right studies of that community itself. You may think that blatant opponents of truth are its worst enemies, 
This is not so, because opponents may always see the errors of their thinking, while those who imagine that they are sincere members of the community of truth will never find sincerity, since they are not seeking it. They think that they have it already. The teacher may be stricter with his students than he can ever be with strangers, for the disciples need a higher form of truth. They need intensive and energetic supervision. The strangers are not at the stage of being capable of working with a more intense form of truth. The similitude is as of the master teaching the finer points of grammar to students who already know the language. To give proper instruction, he has to be punctilious and make sure that every usage of the language is correct and every mistake pointed out. If the master were not concerned, as when a casual or crude visitor shouts out in barbaric words, he will not trouble himself or anyone else by answering. It is always an affront to anyone to criticise him unless one has the status of being his teacher. When the master is teaching, let us say, the basic rules and vocabulary of the language, he is still on the level of relative crudity, and he will allow many mistakes to go unremarked and will praise the successes. When the students have gone beyond the stage where they have need to be praised, when they are really serious enough to know how undesirable it is to have, say, bad pronunciation, they will adopt an attitude which will make them cooperate with the master in helping them make sure that they remember the finer points. To an outsider, such intensity of effort may well look abnormal, but once the master and students are working together, the understanding is between them, and no outside individual can judge as to their relationship. The relationship of a special kind can never be measured by the imaginings of another kind, and even the rules of the schools of shoemakers can never be the same as the rules of the schools of farmers. This podcast is copyright 2016, the Idrisha Foundation.